Shalom once again. Another one. We back again with more David Rubini, the 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 story of the legendary Israelite ambassador of the Israelite kingdom of Chaibar with the tribes of Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh in the year of the, in the fifteen hundreds. The history they try to hide from people, man. Look at my dude, David Rubini, man. He, he was he was an interesting Israelite. We've been reading this story. If you're not hip, you know, go back to the to the other um, parts, you know. So giving all glory, all esteem to Yahuwah, Bashem, Yahusha, Hamashiach, by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. We're going to get into the story some more. Uh, we left off. They just went to Portugal. So we in Portugal. Let me let's see on the map. Okay, on the mishap. So where he started at? He started off in um, Jeddah, or like the port. And he went to the port of Sudan. He, he traveled from Arabia and crossed the sea from Port Sudan. So maybe it could have been the Arabian Kaibar. But he went to Port Sudan, went to Egypt, then visited the Holy Land, then went back to Egypt, and then went to Rome, got the letters, and now we in Portugal. Dude been traveling, man. That's that's great. You know, you who are willing, you know, all of us get to travel like that. If you were, if you already traveling like that, all praises. Alright. So we uh, we arrived close to Cadets. All oh, praises. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, let's see. It says uh, he he's entering the city. He says they thought we were going against the emperor and advised them to come and arrest me and get horses to send me before the emperor. But I was emboldened in my mission and rejoiced in all that Yehovah has done, for it would be for my good and the good of Israel to appear before the emperor. But my servants were afraid and terrified, and I said to them, do no fear or be terrified. After that, you should lead this ship for another ship. Oh, wait, hold on. It said, after that, the ship captain came to me and said, better that you should lead this ship for another ship belonging to the king of Portugal. So, you know, he, he had that faith and he was able to get through. You know, they ended up getting on a different ship that belonged to the king of Portugal. So they didn't look like they was like thieving or anything like that. But my battery getting low. But all praise is for low batteries, you know. Toraya. It says, uh, he rode to a city on the on the mule. But, uh, he went to a house of, Mar of a Murano. So a Murano was an Israelite who lived in a Western country, usually Spain or Portugal. And there was Jews, like they practiced uh, Old Testament only in a sense, but then they became Westernized Christians to not get persecuted. So they looked like Christians on the outside, but in their homes and stuff, sometimes they was curious about Judaism and stuff like that. But they were, um, they were like Israelite Christians, Westernized Christians, kind of like the black people here. Um, it says, in those days, a priest came from Spain who spoke with R. Solomon Cohen, the Portugal, and R. Solomon was angry with him. For the priest said that there was no Jewish king and that we had no sons of royal seed. He was standing before a big window and I was zealous for Yah's sake and took hold of him and threw him from the window onto the ground outside before all the Gentiles. And they laughed at the priest and feared to speak against me. And the great judge or the magistrate heard of this and was greatly rejoiced. So that's a crazy story right there. <laughs> a priest came from Spain. Y'all know that we've been we ruled Spain. We've been we was ruling Spain for a good long time. And um he said, Ain't no ain't no kings, ain't no Israelite kings no more. And uh David Rubini, he was salty at that because you know his brother is the king of his kingdom. And they Israelites, he's like, What you mean, that lack of faith? But then he got angry himself and threw him out the window, you know. He ain't had to do all of that. <laughs> but uh let's see what else happened, man. They went to Evora, the Moranos, Christians. A Morano is basically an Israelite Christian, and a Christian is basically a white, a white Christian. 
Let's see, what's this? Uh, he went to the king's palace. And uh, it, it's a community of many honored Muranos there. We stayed at the house of Murano on the Sabbath and on Sunday. <laughs> and in every city we entered, Muranos came. Men and women, great and small, and kissed my hand. And the Christians were jealous of me and said to them, Show him great honor, do not, but do not kiss his hand, but only the hand of the king of Portugal alone. So that's 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 gonna be the the root of why this kind of goes downhill later on. It says, um, some were of stout heart because they believed in me with a proper with a perfect faith, as Israel believed in our master Moses, on whom would be peace. Moranos came to him from every side and every corner to accompany me. And they gave me presents and some righteous Gentiles also. Until I arrived two Parisians distance from the king. So, you know, he was very popular in Portugal. And, and because of that and because his status, you know, he was he was like a prince. He was a, a, a ambassador for Israelite kingdom. The Moranos is like, whoa. So, like, imagine a, a, a a brother from an Israelite kingdom coming to America and just stepping down talking about, you know, we about to do this and this and this. The people will probably go crazy, you know. We had to definitely check and see if he coming in the name of Christ, but, you know, people will be crazy. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, okay. Don Miguel, he a hater. We gonna read about him later. He, he was a hater. And, uh, he kept trying to well, let's read what he said. He said, Then said Don Miguel to the king, Did I not say to you that he has come to destroy your kingdom and to restore the Moranos to the faith of the Jews? So we see Don Miguel was one saying stuff in the king's ear to get him to not mess with David Rubini. So, uh, let's see, let's see, where we at now? Another page. So, um, so when that was during a conference with the king, let me see what David Rubini said. He said, I was not willing to kiss his hand either when I came or when I left because of the anger in my heart, which the wicked Don Miguel had caused me. So, because that dude was telling lies to the king in front of him. He was so angry. He, 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 you know, he was like, man, I ain't kissing the king hand. I ain't kissing none of your hand. I don't rock with y'all right now. Because afterwards, I took leave of the king and went to sanitarium to the house of Murano, which they had prepared for me. It was a big house, and the master of the house was quite wicked, but his wife was much honored. A Murano came to me who speaks Arabic and had come in the ships of the king, who had sent him once for two years to the land of the blacks, Abyssinia. So, um, the land of the blacks, that could be, let's go to the map, let's go to the map. So he said, so they're in Portugal, and he said, Israelite who spoke Arabic came on one of the ships. So that ship was probably going to Morocco, that's where I'm, that's where I think, because he says he, um, he had got sent to the land of the blacks, which is Negro land, which is right here, at uh, Mali. But they call it Abyssinia too, which was Ethiopia over here. But this place is also called Ethiopia. You had an upper, you had an upper Ethiopia, a lower Ethiopia, and then Abyssinia, which was like the central capital. And then this was also called Ethiopia as well. But um, that's a whole different topic. Maybe we can go into that. All right. So let's see what else this is. Uh, what happened? He told me that the Murano, he told me that he went to an island in the sea a half day's journey and stayed an hour in that place and stood near a big mountain from which fire burnt day and night, from which fire and smoke went up to heaven. Near to that mountain, the old king of Portugal sent the young children of the Muranos and left them there until this very day. So according to what some other brothers been pulling out in research, the island he could have been talking about was the island of Saint Tom or Saint Tome, um, 
where the king of Portugal has sent the Israelite kids there uh, um, to get the to get the Jews to convert to to Western. So like I was saying, you know, the king of Portugal he took the kids and he sent them off to the island of San Tome. This is uh, recorded in history, and um, a lot of the kids uh, that was sent were young. So a lot of the kids were sent to Africa. They was young, didn't know their family history or anything like that. So this plays into um, us losing our history through time. And um, I want to show you this picture right here, Jews in Portugal. So in this picture, you can see a Murano right here on a horse, a black man on a horse with a, a cross on the back. So he was more than likely an honored Murano. There's a couple of them in this picture probably. And again, a, a Murano was uh, an Israelite who followed European Christianity and converted. Um, it's a possibility that this man's kids could have got sent to Africa to force him to uh, convert. So, where we at? Okay. So that's where we at. Uh, that's where we left off. Okay. He talks about a man that he met who was a real Christian, who loved all the Jews. That's what's up. You know, those shout out to the real Christians. He says, I and old Solomon Cohen and Ben Zion, my servants, and we came before the king, and the king called Emirano, an old physician who was interpreter between me and the king in Hebrew. So we got the Moranos um, translating for the uh, Jewish ambassador with the king being an interpreter, right? He said, I spoke with him on the matter of my mission, right? I'm going to just read the underlying parts. He said, King Joseph, my brother, asked me with reference to the artifices of weapons for his kingdom. The king was greatly pleased with my words and his heart rejoiced within him. And he said, the matter is of the Lord. I am willing to do so, and it shall be my desire. So at the beginning, the beginning stages, um, the king of Portugal, he he's down with it so far. He's like, okay, I'll send some weapons to help y'all fight to get the Holy Land back. Since afterwards, a great Muslim lord, a judge of the king of Fez, which is Morocco, came to me. Be to be the last page I highlight. This judge, he he gave him letters from the Jews of Fez. So the Jews of Morocco had letters to send to this man, David Rubini. He said, "We wish to go with God's help to Jerusalem to capture the land of Israel from the Muslims, but the end and salvation has arrived." The judge was much amazed at this and said to me. We believe that the kingdom will return to you this time. And if you return, will you do kindness to us? I said to him, yes, we will do kindness to you and to all who do kindness to Israel, which is in captivity under Ishmael, which was the, the original Arabs and the Turkish Arabs, and Edom. Uh, Edom is mixed in within the Arabs, but you also have some black races um, who claim Edom like the... Um, the royal class of the Sokoto Caliphate in Nigeria, in, in North Nigeria, the Fulani. But we're going to get into another video about that. And I said to the judge, uh, do you also believe that the kingdom of the land of Ishmael will return to us? And he replied to me, in all the world, they believe this. All right. So uh, you can read that. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, he's going to tell them about the tribes, right? He said... We are kings and our fathers were kings from the time of the destruction of the temple to this day in the wilderness of Chaiba. We rule over the tribes of Reuben and Gad and half tribe of Manasseh in the wilderness of Harbor. And there are nine and a half tribes in the land of Ethiopia and other kings. The nearest to us are the tribe of Simeon and the tribe of Benjamin and they are on the river Nile and the kingdom of Sheba. And they rely and they reside beside the two rivers, the Blue River and the Black River, which is the Nile. Um, 
let's see what else. So that's that's the location of the Israelites. Let me go get the map real quick so I can show you all this. So you said the Nile. So we got the Nile River and the Blue Nile and the White Nile is up here near Ganda. So you said these was the Israelites nearest to him, right? He said, uh, let me turn this music down real quick. Alright. He says, uh, we, it says, uh, we and they take counsel together. Jews under his rule should be protected by him and that he should honor them and this will be the beginning of peace between us and him, between our seed and his seed. So the king of Fez asks, you know, see Fez, he asks, how will we be kept safe when y'all start to take over? He said, you know, treat your Israelites kind and that'll be the peace between us and them. And he asks, what will you do with the Jews and all the lands of the West? So what will you do with all the Jews that's in Europe and uh, and, and today further West and the uh, Americas? He says, I replied that we shall first take the Holy Land and the surroundings and that then our captains of the host will go forth to the West and East to gather the dispersed of Israel. And whoever is wise among the Muslim kings will take the Jews under his rule and bring them to Jerusalem. And he will have much honor, greater than that of all the Muslims. King, all the Muslim kings and Elohim will deliver up the kingdoms to the king of Jerusalem, which will be Hamashiach. Uh, right. So they, the Muslims was like, are you the prophet or the Messiah? And he was like, God forbid, I'm a sinner before the Lord, greater than any one of you. I have slain many men and I killed 40 enemies. I'm neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, neither a wise man or a Kabbalist. Alright. He said, if God forbid, I am a sinner and a man of war from my youth till now. So that's where we're going to stop at right now and we'll continue another day. But right now we see he's in Portugal speaking to a man from Fez about the Israelites who are in Ethiopia over here and in the land of the blacks over here. I have it together. They're going to retake Jerusalem. So the one for now, until next time, we're going to keep on getting into the stories of David Rubini.